What's up, hackers? I got a few minutes, and I thought, like, why not make another YouTube video or a piece of Emacs propaganda, as my friend calls it. Let's do something fun and uh, practical today. I would like to show you how nice and enjoyable the process of doing something in Emacs could be. And uh, this is perhaps some stuff many don't even expect. And maybe you find uh, this useful and uh, share some ideas with me. Always appreciate those. Uh, so I've been exploring some APIs lately and uh, I needed to take some notes and uh, document some endpoints and of course, of course, I wanted to do that from org mode. There are a few ways to send requests uh, from org mode, OB HTTP and OB REST client are probably, uh, they are somewhat well-known packages. So this is how it works. If I want to do with uh, OB HTTP, I would have a source block. So here, uh, you can see I've uh, set up a YAS snippet. It gives me like uh, these choices uh, that I set up. Um, so if I say HTTP and pretty is an, uh, if you want if you want to uh, JSON body in the response to be automatically formatted. So let's use one of those uh, free APIs. I think it goes like API dot uh, the cat API dot com v1. Oh, we'll do breeds, all right? So if I press Control C, Control C, it will execute this uh, the source block, and because it's uh, HTTP source block, it will send a request. Okay, so it sends a request. Here's the the response. It's a nicely formatted JSON, and basically, in essence, this is how it works. REST client, a REST client works similarly. You just have to say REST client here. Uh, well, I. I don't have REST client installed on my machine, so if I try, it's not gonna work. You can see it says like uh, function, there's no org label execute function for REST client. Uh, but I won't be talking about HTTP or REST client. Um, I will be talking about something different. Uh, but mainly this, is, this was the way for uh, a long time how I did, how I uh, send uh, API requests until uh, not too long ago, Jeff Bowman, uh, awesome Jeff Bowman, uh, he showed me something pretty cool. And uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff is a maintainer of Crafted Emacs. Uh, if you never heard about Crafted Emacs, you definitely probably heard about uh, System Crafters. System Crafters and amazing uh, David Wilson. Uh, uh, if you're watching this video, you, you probably saw System Crafters uh, YouTube channel and maybe watched some uh, a few videos. Uh. So Crafted Emacs is a starter kit, uh, yet another starter kit. It's uh, in if you tried like uh, things like Space Max, Doom, Prelude, uh, what else there, Corgi, etc. Maybe you didn't like them for some reason, and uh, or maybe you just uh, uh, want to borrow some good ideas from uh, different places. Uh, take a look at Crafted. Um, so that thing Jeff showed me is called Verb, and this is the thing I will be talking about today. So initially, when I saw this package, I was like, "Wow, this is cool," but I was kind of skeptical, mainly because of my laziness. I, you know, these days are so many different packages, features uh, for Emacs, and uh, I was like, wow, this is cool, but do I really need it, right? Um, so this is basically how it works. Uh, I will have a heading here. Uh, it doesn't matter what it says. It's like, you know, it's kind of like for, for, for documentation, I can say like, you know, uh, test, testing uh, cat API, right? And then I will have to give it a tag, and this, this one's important. This is configurable. You can see it says verb, but you can configure it to say something different, but uh, by default it says verb. And then I would say template, uh, template, and uh, the template would be HTTPS, uh, what was it? Uh, API, vcatapi.com, v1. Right, so this this is going to be our template. Now, in a subheading, 
I would say uh, breeds again it doesn't matter what it says and and I don't have uh, to give it a tag because uh, by default tags are in subheadings are inherited uh, from the top headings so now in breeds I would say get and I will just say breeds okay uh, that will send a get request to breeds uh, it will now uh, verb adds a bunch of commands and the command I want to use is this one verb send request on point so let's let's use that one verb send request on point right now you can see it sends request and the results shown in a different and separate window which is nice and it's uh, also uh, has syntax highlighting it's uh, it's it's JSON and uh, you can uh, do you can see the headers of it and uh, you can see the request uh, verb show request show show request you can see like that's uh, this is the composed request you can probably immediately see how um, useful this could be like for example if you have like hierarchy of uh, uh, of the segments of the API so for example if you have like something like um, breeds then search um, search and like something uh, else right so then you can have like uh, subheadings and subheadings of subheadings like you know and can do like you know um, do something like uh, get uh, search right like so it will compose this hierarchy into a proper uh, proper query but uh, most of the time it's uh, the single uh, level and uh, you'll say oh well like this is nice but um, you know what I prefer the, the source blocks because source blocks are like you know they're easy to use and like you know you can see the results right there uh, as a different source block well guess what actually verb also allows to do the source blocks as well so I'll explain why this one says closure um, just uh, in a minute but by default it should be JSON so we wrap this in JSON and now I don't need this one I'll just remove this and here I would again say breeds and since I already set a template right in a, in a heading that uh, says verb right and then if I press control C control C um, it says no get beats maybe I do need a subheading let's try um, breeds let's try control C control C oh yeah this works now it returns JSON as you can see if uh, since we said like wrap it in uh, source block JSON it wraps in source block JSON this op thing uh, I'll explain uh, just in a bit so this is this is cool right like you can do this way and if you want to actually see it in a different window you still this this uh, command verb um, request on point verb send request on point still works and you can still see it in a separate window which is nice um, so it gives you some versatility and uh, but this is not exactly why I uh, I really love uh, verb and not exactly the main reason why I like made the switch from uh, HTTP or HTTP the reason I switched I'll show you and uh, the reason why initially my source block said uh, closure let's let, let me delete these um, and then uh, create a again a source block with closure in it so and if I have these two variables and I have to say these are my custom variables they are not included this feature is not included in uh, verb right so I say like return response as Eden so Eden is um, is stands for extensible data notation it's basically closure why I like it so let's let's uh, let me see if I, I still have my response uh, in JSON right uh, let's uh, rename this buffer so I can find it later uh, JSON response okay now I will enable this uh, response enabled in Eden okay I will enable this and I'll show you in detail how this works so now if I say get breeds right and uh, if I press uh, control C control C it will do in a in a separate um, in a source block right so 
you can see it uh, takes a bit longer but it gives me the results in closure in Eden and why why you would say like well it's very similar to Jason what's the point so like let's uh, pull them together right like so you can see that Jason is a little bit sh like longer it's more verbose right uh, Eden is already shorter it's it's a bit shorter because um, you know uh, you don't need to wrap uh, the keys uh, they don't have to be strings uh, these, these are like closure keywords um, you can do stuff like aligning them like nicely you you can probably do this in JSON as well but that uh, it's not gonna be the the proper JSON anymore but this is still uh, is a proper uh, even you can remove commas they're totally optional I don't bother with removing them automatically but like you know they, they don't you don't need them because like you know, um, but uh, uh, so but that's not all right that's not all these are not all the benefits of um, having it in uh, closure uh, data structure uh, one of the since closure is a list and you can have connected you you can be connected to a REPL and I already have a uh, uh, REPL running uh, so if I do something I can do something like this right from here right from the editor uh, I can evaluate this code I said like you know a uh, count how many things are here in this uh, response right and it says oh you have 67 things in your response but that's not all like let's say hey I want to find all like URLs for this thing right so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna thread this this is a threading macro in closure so it's basically saying like take this thing take this entire thing and thread it into like send it into a uh, whatever comes next right so next I mean like I can do count and it still gives me 67 but I wanted to do uh, to find the uh, web suite URLs okay so let's do this since we have multiple things here 67 things in this uh, uh, in this vector uh, they're called vectors enclosure for uh, specific reasons I, I, I won't uh, get into uh, into that um, so uh, we'll say like you know get all the web suites right like and if I uh, eval that and I say like uh, pre print it so we can see all the um, all the URLs uh, from and uh, let's see if we have any uh, duplicates uh, we probably have some duplicates maybe not but it's easy it's easy to find out right like so I will say set right so how many how many uh, here uh, can I can I do it writable so if I count this right uh, will it work oh it doesn't it's not gonna this this one is not connected to the oh no it should be connected it's uh, I just needed to uh, quote it let's see still 67 all right still 67 uh, now let if I do a set right it means sets cannot have uh, um, duplicates right and if I say count of the elements of the set you can see that it's now 51 because uh, probably because some nils here or maybe some duplicates anyway um, the, the point is that it gives you the flexibility of like like uh, filtering data, you know, uh, finding data, uh, grouping data differently, uh, you can do all sorts of things. Uh, I mean, like, I'm not saying you can't do this in, uh, like, if, if this is just JSON, you can, you probably, there are probably ways, but since I know Clojure, Clojure is a, is a tool that I have uh, in my tool belt, I thought, like, why not use it? So how uh, uh, I made this work, if I go to my uh, configuration where I am oh what is happening something's happening with my computer so how does this work um, I if I go to my configuration where I set up the verb verb has uh, this is part of verb uh, it has this hook 
uh, verb post response hook. So what I'm basically doing, I'm running a function, and in this function, I say like, hey, if this, this is again, this is my own variable that I introduced here. You see, uh, by default is uh, both of them true. So this one, it says like, hey, if you want to send requests, right? And like uh, later we'll see like some post examples. Um, uh, we've been doing get examples. But if I like, you know, for post examples, if you want to send somebody with your request, you may want to be to have it also as uh, as Eden, uh, not Jason, right? And uh, if I enable this, so it uh, goes into the hook function, and here it says it checks if that's enabled. If not, it just skips this. If it's enabled, it takes the the. Um, the content of this uh, the verb buffer right and I have this uh, uh, another uh, slightly longer function uh, basically what it does it runs uh, a tool called jet jet is a command line tool and what it can do it can transform JSON to Eden and YAML and from YAML and uh, JSON uh, from YAML and Eden it can transform it back to JSON so this is basically what this function does it returns uh, JSON and uh, and basically that how the response turns into JSON uh, now what uh, the request is slightly different for the request I couldn't use there's no uh, similar hook that uh, that happens. I, I won't get into details about uh, how hooks in Emacs work. Uh, you can probably find uh, this information, and maybe you already know how they work. Um, but there is no specific hook, so I had to find the function that uh, runs before sending the request, right? And this function turns out to be this request spec post process. So it basically uh, takes uh, uh, the request object right and uh, and uh, does something like you know I, I don't I'm not even sure like it validates checks on like that's some validation basically prepares the the request specification to be sent right and here I say like hey th this is one of the the greatest powers of Emacs and uh, Lisp comes that this dynamism that you can change the behavior of any function any function this like you know verb is a thing that is not a package that like you know I am familiar uh, with the, the source code or like you know I never uh, contributed to this project I just went to the source code I found this function I like figured out like how like what runs after what and I've uh, said like you know hey, around this function like run this my function my, my function my custom function right and my custom function uh, since it's a, a round advice it takes the function which would be, which will be like the original function so basically in this case it would be this the web uh, dash dash request back post process right so I need it like um, a pointer to that function um, then uh, again I'm checking if my custom variable is enabled uh, if not we just skip this whole this whole thing and we just call that function the original function with the request specification right otherwise we take the the body which and we say like no hey is it does it look like json and if it contains uh a word with the semicolon and uh, the word uh, with the um that is uh, uh, within the quote and uh, followed uh, by uh, a colon uh then basically again i'm running jet but this time from it's it's much simpler right from eden to json and boom it just turns entire uh, body into that and we'll change we, we would change the the value inside the the, the request specification and uh, basically that's that's all that's that's how it works right now you may say oh okay this this looks cool and uh, awesome thanks Zach. I learned something new today I put the video like you know close the tab and go back to Emacs 
Um, but uh, some of you may say, like, what about like real stuff, like not like cat API, like something like more uh, practical, right? Like with the the post requests and uh, stuff like that. So let's let's see. I've been um, doing like exactly this. I've been tapping into this uh, Cyber Reason API. What does it do? It's not important. Um, uh, but it uh, requires authentication. It like uses like cookies and stuff like that, right? So uh, let's let's uh, let's let's go through some basic examples. Uh, you can see like again like as uh, previously I said verb uh, tag. I have a template. I have like something else. I have like some headers. I have a cookie header, um, a content type application JSON, uh, but and then a cookie header. And it says like, you know, this is how it should be. And this is the interesting bits. You see this um, double curlies, I mean, run some Emacs uh, Lisp within, right? So what you can do is, uh, so basically I'm getting the cookie, I'm grabbing the cookie from a file, from cookies.txt. Um, so uh, basically to, uh, to authenticate with the API, what it does, it sends the uh, request to, you need to send request to uh, slash login, and then uh, with specific uh, username and password, I will uh, try to like blur them in the video, right? So, and then uh, you, you can see that I'm using uh, just a source block with, uh, with the shell, um, a shell source block, so it basically runs in, um, uh, runs the the curl command, and since curl command has a dash c, it uh, puts the cookie uh, into the file uh, that I can later reuse. Uh, so basically, I can say like the uh, when I run this command, right, it creates a file, it creates a file, and if I go um, go and find this. Uh, cookies txt it looks like this right it looks like this and what I need I need this value so I there is actually uh, in Emacs there's a function that can parse um, parse the, uh, those kind of files so if I go back to cookies txt you can see this is a Netscape HTTP cookie file so uh, there is um, Netscape uh, yeah, you can see that there is a function uh, URL cookie parse file Netscape, but I couldn't get it to work for some reason. It just like it would say like I don't know what was wrong, and I didn't want to spend too much time uh, trying to figure this out. And I said like no, I'm just gonna grip for the thing and use awk and uh, get this. So basically, what it does if I run it in in uh, uh, in the terminal. Uh, I have to remove these, right? Um, and it gives me the my cookie uh, value, right? And then, uh, basically, I'm saying like run this command in shell and whatever it returns, like use it uh, and set it to like JSON session ID. So I have to like uh, whenever cookie expires, it like you know it stays long enough for like you know a day or so, then I have to like uh, run this uh, uh, this source uh, block and then uh, and then I don't I, I can forget about the authentication like in every single block it's like you no know, if I want to get users it uses these uh, headers right automatically so if I press control C control C it will give me the a list of users again because I want them in closure uh, in Eden uh, format it uh, takes a bit longer for to, to format to like turn it into what like again I can see like as uh, as before thread this I can see count boom oh uh, many users right um, so that's uh, that I can do and I've, I've, you already seen this right um, but now here's 
what uh, what crazy about this stuff? I mean, like it's still Git. Like if I want to do post that, like you know, post still works. And again, I can send uh, a JSON or I can send uh, in this uh, in this case I'm sending. Uh, I'm, I, it will still send JSON, but uh, I don't have to have this uh, as JSON here. It can totally be uh, closure. But now remember about this thing, right? Op send and get body. So what crazy about verb that you can take this uh, uh, you can take this request and export it to curl, right? Verb export request and point to on point curl, boom, and command copy to the kill ring. And now I can go to the terminal and oops. It's uh, this one, right? And I can run it. So you can see it actually sends the proper request with the cookie. And this is a great way to share share this uh, um, share with your colleagues. If like you know, you can't you can't share the request like this, right? Like you know, uh, it makes sense. Make makes no sense, but uh, you can share it. Uh, moreover, if you, I change this operator to export and say export it to curl and run this block right execute this source block um, guess what happens it creates another source block right well i should have said like wrap it in shell right and then if i run it so you can see it's it's actually a source block by itself that i can execute just like a normal source block it would oh it says bad request why i don't know why it says bad request oh look at that i uh missed something somewhere oh i know what this is not enabled right so if i enable this request even enabled i should have enabled this so now if i export it again right it creates a source block uh, let me delete uh the old one so it creates a source block with the the curl and if i execute it it actually sends a request but using curl this time i can even do something like you know uh i don't know uh no, not, not here though uh over here right so if i do this come on give me something nice huh it's taking forever uh did it work did i, I did it something I missed something. Not sure. Um, why didn't it work? It should work, doesn't it? Uh, no. Exited with code. I'm missing something. Anyway, um, that's uh, all for today. Um, thank you for for coming and watching this video. Bye.